Uh, next speaker will be Professor Kaseda, uh, University of Kitakyushu. You have 15 minutes. Yes. Well, uh, thank you very much, Professor Kwak, uh, for inviting me to this uh, uh, this panel and uh, giving me the opportunity to present uh, Japan's view on uh, Korean unification vision and Northeast Asian uh, peace building. Okay. Well. Um, I would like to talk about Japan's stance, stance toward uh, the Korean uh, issue and the issues and uh, uh, how uh, Japan approach to uh, peace building in Northeast Asia. Um, unfortunately, uh, Japan lacks leadership and uh, <laughs> visions. Uh, I, I'm kind of critical of my Jap <laughs> of my country, um, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we do have some interest in normalization uh, with DPLK. Uh, we had normalization talks which started in early 1990s, and we had a uh, first summit uh, in uh, 2002. And uh, we, are, uh, we have motivations. Uh, we have expectation for uh, gaining economic, economic benefits. Uh, by improving Japan's relationship with North Korea. But uh, uh, Japan has been following the policy of the United States and, and, and South Korea, uh, particularly the policy of the United States. Uh, it's because, well, for Japan, United States is the most important country, and uh, South Korea is important too. Um, uh, the relationship with North Korea uh, comes last compared to the two other countries. Uh, so improvement in, the, in North Korea's relationship with the United States and South Korea uh, can facilitate, uh, has actually facilitated Japan's uh, softer stance toward North Korea. But uh, on the other hand, uh, when tensions uh, increases uh, between North Korea and United States and South Korea, uh, it becomes difficult for Japan to improve relationship with North Korea. And uh, um, because of the Japan's this tendency to follow the lead of uh, United States and uh, South Korea, uh, Japan has presented few concrete ideas for peace building uh, through peaceful means. And uh, um, in Japan, there have been few serious policy discussions uh, on Korean unification. Uh, unfortunately, well, uh, there has not been strong uh, interest in um, discussing, uh, taking up uh, the issue of Korean unification. Uh, as a result, we don't really have um, concrete visions uh, for promoting uh, Korean unification. But I would say uh, Japan can benefit from, um, as Professor Kwak pointed out, neutralization uh, of hostile relationship uh, of Japan, United States, and South Korea with uh, North Korea. Japan can benefit economically uh, from greater economic exchanges among Northeast Asian countries. Also, uh, Japan can expect reduction in uh, security costs. Uh, for instance, cost for uh, unilateral military buildups. Japan has actually uh, sp has increased uh, military spending uh, in response to North Korea's nuclear and missile development. Uh, second, um, Japan can reduce cost for strengthening uh, its alliance with the United States um, in order to strengthen our relationship with the United States uh, we have maintained a large military presence of United States in Japan particularly in Okinawa it's a heavy burden uh, for, for people in Okinawa uh, we also provide the largest 
uh, host nation support for the United States. Uh, it's uh, very significant. Uh, these kind of costs can be reduced by uh, improving uh, tension, uh, reducing the tension with North Korea. Uh, but uh, uh, as I said, U.S. policy has the strongest influence over Japan. <laughs> and uh, uh, so U.S. policy toward North Korea is crucial, crucially important to Japan's policy toward North Korea. Uh, but the United States, I would say, has been re very reluctant to normalize its relationship with North Korea. Uh, uh, U.S. has reasons for its reluctance. Um, United, uh, well, first, I, I, uh, uh, let me mention uh, that the uh, United States made a few bold steps toward normalization, uh, despite uh, the agreed framework of 1994, uh, in which the uh, United States agreed to normalize, act toward normalization. Uh, also, despite the agreements at the six party talks in 2007, um, in which United States again uh, promised to uh, move toward normalization, but uh, a few concrete steps actually uh, succeeded, uh, followed after the agreement. And why United States has been so reluctant? Um, uh, because I would say uh, normalization with North Korea uh, <coughs> can have, can create negative impacts. First, uh, declining South Korea and Japan's security reliance on the United States. And, and this could lead to reduction in South Korea's and Japan's uh, host nation support for U.S. forces in their countries. Also, um, if tension reduces, uh, declines, uh, U.S. arms sales to the two countries uh, will be uh, smaller, will get smaller. Another kind of um, <coughs> negative impact is in uh, economic, uh, in the area of economy. Uh, if the tension with North Korea uh, reduces to the extent that the United States normalizes its relationship, uh, I would say um, South Korea and Japan's economic, economic dependence on uh, the United States will uh, become smaller. Um, if the Northeast Asia become a peaceful uh, place, uh, there will be greater economic interaction among Northeast Asian countries. Uh, that will uh, reduce South Korea's and Japan's economic dependence on the United States. Um, so uh, overall, U.S. Um, normalization with the uh, with uh, uh, South Korea uh, is likely to lead to uh, erosion of declining uh, U.S. influence, power over the, uh, over the two countries, Japan and South Korea. And these are the uh, negative aspects that United States can easily anticipate, <laughs> expect. Um, <coughs> But uh, in contrast to the United States, uh, North Korea has been very eager to normalize its relationship with the United States. Um, for instance, um, following the 1994 agreed framework, North Korea actually froze uh, its nuclear facilities. And uh, after the 2009 agreement at the six party talks, uh, maybe I should say, instead of dismantlement, um, <coughs> following uh, Professor Quack's advice, and I should have said uh, written, uh, disablement, uh, disablement of no nuclear facilities. It went beyond the uh, steps it had taken at the time of uh, agreed framework. That time just uh, freeze, but after the six party talks agreement, North Korea moved beyond that stage and actually started dismantling uh, nuclear facilities, right? So actually North Korea made these kinds of concrete uh, actions. And, uh, and then wh why North Korea has been so eager? 
uh, to improve its relationship with the United States. Uh, it has good reasons. Um, um, the thing is, uh, United States, uh, U.S. economic and military pressure on United uh, on North Korea has been hindering, obstacling, uh, distracting uh, North Korea's economic development. That's one thing. Another thing is, as I said, Japan's policy toward North Korea is largely <laughs> dependent on U.S. policy toward North Korea. So. Uh, bad relationship between North Korea and the United States uh, led to, uh, actually, uh, prevented uh, Japan DPLK normalization. And also, um, bad uh, relationship between the United States and North Korea uh, negatively affected uh, improvement in North inter-Korean relations. <laughs> and. Uh, since United States is reluctant to promote uh, reduction in tension in Northeast Asia, and Japan is not really likely to, uh, to uh, play a leading role, uh, I would say uh, South Korea needs to uh, play the role of creating promoting uh, peace in Northeast Asia. And I, I would say no, South Korea has a good reason to do so. Uh, first, uh, South Korea, of course, uh, has a passion uh, for reunification, unlike Japan or uh, uh, Japanese or Americans. Uh, second, um, unrestric unrestricted Inter-Korean exchanges, human uh, exchanges, and economic exchanges are strongly desired uh, for South Koreans. And South Koreans, uh, South, South Korea could uh, get a lot of economic benefit uh, from uh, improvement in uh, inter-Korean relations and uh, a greater peace in Northeast Asia. And uh, actually, uh, China and Russia can play a uh, facilitating role uh, for uh, peace building in Northeast Asia uh, along with South Korea. Uh, these two countries can also uh, benefit economically uh, from greater peace. Uh, um, as, you, as you know, uh, China has been the leading uh, economic partner uh, for the uh, North Korea. Uh, it has provided aid and, uh, and uh, bilateral trade is very large and uh, South Korea, uh, China has provided, uh, has invested uh, in North Korea, uh, particularly well known in uh, investment in Rajin. It's a North Eastern part of, uh, <coughs> North, uh, of North Korea bordering uh, China and Russia. <coughs> Uh, investing in uh, <coughs> development of logistical log logis logistics, uh, railways and roads connecting uh, China's northern provinces uh, to uh, North Korean port of port city of Rajin, and uh, uh, this way uh, China is trying to promote economic development in uh, these uh, rather underdeveloped region of uh, North East um, provinces. Uh, Russia also uh, wants to develop a uh, far eastern part of the country and uh, by, uh, in order to do so, uh, Russia has been uh, recently uh, active in <coughs> developing uh, economic relationship, expanding economic relationship with uh, North Korea, just like uh, China investing in uh, Rajin. Uh, building railways and uh, developing port facilities. And I would say at the final part, uh, move on to the final section, uh, I would say it is a high time for South Korea to take the lead. Um, it's partly because North Korea uh, now put a lot of emphasis on economic development. 
This is kind of paradoxical, ironical, but uh, uh, North Korea has reached the stage of uh, military development uh, to the extent uh, it has, you know, succeeded uh, in putting uh, object into the uh, space orbit. Uh, they say was well, satellite, um, and also uh, North Korea has conducted three nuclear tests. So now North Korea, the Kim regime, reached the stage uh, where it can say to the public that we are now militarily powerful state. Now we can uh, focus on uh, developing the country economically, making the country economically strong. Uh, so, uh, as you uh, may well know that uh, North Korea has been uh, implementing a lot of uh, economic reform policies. Uh, so, this is a good timing opportunity uh, for or South Korea to make uh, active engagement in actually supporting uh, North Korea's effort uh, in that direction, along with China and Russia. Well, uh, I, was, I think I should end uh, my presentation here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kaseda.